again. Homework that I'm going to send today will be due this Thursday. Uh, will be due on Thursday. Um, you might have like another piece of homework that will add to it, but it'll be relatively small. Like today's stuff is super easy, especially like once you see like a couple of examples I give you, it's not difficult. I mean, it's simple. It's algebra 1 where you solve for an x, um, or you just have to know your property name. So it's, um, I believe the PowerPoint, this PowerPoint is online. Um, I think the video is actually being posted right now for from Thursday's lesson, so if you need to watch it. So the PowerPoint, this thing is already up there. Okay? All right. Um, so again, what we're doing is we're trying to prove that certain lines are parallel on a picture. Now let's do a quick review of what we've talked about. We basically talked about um, you know, postulates and theorems. Now the big thing about these postulates and theorems is that the theorems were all basically all converses. That, So, um, so the idea is that uh, the theorems here are all converse. What well, we talked about last week, what a converse is. Converse is when you take like a sentence and you basically just switch the words around. What I mean by that, they're going to leave the if then where they sit. Like, if it snows, then we'll be canceled. But what they do is they leave the if then and they switch the two parts. So, if we are canceled, then it will snow. Like that. They just switch the hypothesis conclusion. That's what they did with all these theorems. We've already had the theorems before. They're in section 3.2. That was the beginning of chapter 3. Um, but now what they're doing is they're coming back to them and they're just rewriting them differently. So that's what we talked about on Thursday. And we intro just a couple. Now the big ones were, um, or the main purpose of them, is to prove that certain lines are parallel. So that's what you've got to be thinking about. Now the different, the different theorems were basically there was a corresponding angle theorem, there was a alternate exterior angle theorem, same side, and then alternate interior. I believe we ended here. I think, uh, if you check your notes, I think we ended here. It was like theorem 3, 7, or something like that. Okay? Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to click through these right now, just to make sure that if you're gone, if you were, if you were here, you get to at least see those one more time. Um, we are going to introduce a new theorem today, just one. And it is, um, it is about perpendicular. Okay, so it's theorem 3.8. It is a converse of a previous one. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, and then after that, we'll do a couple examples. Okay, any, any questions, comments, concerns about what we're going to go into today? Now, the big thing is, before we start, we are going to hit, uh, we're going to review the postulates we talked about. There was two postulates in particular. Okay, um, I believe it was postulate 3.4, which was a converse of another one, and then postulate 3.5, which was brand new. We talked about parallel. Okay? Let me put it up here. Was um, who was gone Friday? I know we had a couple that were gone. Okay. Uh, Thursday. Thir Thursday. Okay. When I put these up here, I'll give them a little bit of time. So if you need to, you can write them down and draw them. Then I'll explain. It. Okay. All right. So here's the here's the first one. This is the one we started on Thursday. And again, this PowerPoint is online from Thursday. So if you need to copy that, you can always do that. Okay. All right. I'll let you take a little bit of time here. Write it down, and then we'll discuss. As you're writing it, um, what we talked about on this one, it is a converse. It's a converse of a previous one. It was a converse of the very first postulate we had in chapter 3. Uh, that postulate was called the corresponding angle postulate. The corresponding angles are, when you have a picture, the corresponding angles are the ones that are ones inside, ones outside, and they don't touch. They have to be on the same side of the transversal. The transversal in this picture is the line I did not uh, label, okay, because it goes through others. So like 1 and 3, those are corresponding. Well, what we've had previously was that if you have parallel lines, those particular angles are the same. What this one says is a complete flip of that. If I start with the angles being equal, I can then show you that the lines have to be parallel. And what we talked about on Thursday was that the reason why that works is because the slopes are the same. That's what we discussed. The slope, the angle that is made is because of the slope. And since the slopes are the same, we've already had a previous postulate, it was postulate 3 2, that said the lines have to be parallel. That's why this one works. I know that's weird. Usually we never prove postulates, but it is kind of nice to explain why it works. Okay. 
All right, now, again, what we talked about was that this is a complete converse of 3-1. In fact, the next slide that I had on the PowerPoint was 3-1. So you can see the one we did previously versus this one. Thank you, Fred. Okay, we get with those that were gone. Who are my three or four that were gone? I think we had, it was just basically for holding back. Was there anyone in number two? No. Okay, so, any of you three need that still? No, Brad, I don't think you were coming as well. But, okay. Okay, again, this one's online. Or it's in the text. All right. Um, this is 3 1. This one we had, you know, a couple sections back. So you don't need to rewrite this one. We already have this one in your notes, or hopefully you already do. Um, this is one we got from section 3 2. This is the one that we just did a converse of. This one says if you have parallel lines, then these certain angles are the same. The corresponding angles are equal. So that was the flip. So what I did is I basically just compared these on Thursday, why they were basically the same postulate. Okay? All right, this was the brand new one that we talked about. This is the one that, like, if you're gone, you needed this one. Um, it's called the parallel postulate. Basically, it talks about if I, were, if I were to give you this line right here, line N, and I gave you a point not on it, so point P, there is exactly one line and only one line that goes from point P that can be parallel to this line N. There's only one. What we just basically discussed on uh, on Thursday was how does that work? Basically, we can we can copy angles in such a way where you know I drew a line like this where it was definitely not parallel, and we basically can copy this angle up to here using the constructions that we've learned, like copying angles with a with a compass. And basically, what we did is we forced the corresponding angles to be the same. And if the corresponding angles are the same, then the lines are parallel. That was the previous posture we just learned. So that's what we did. And that's why it works. We're forcing those angles to be the same. And we talked about why it's the only one, because if you were to change this line in any certain way, this line going through here, like we were to make it a weird kind of angle, now it's not the same, because now this is a little bit extra that we don't have down here, so it's not the same angle, so this line is not parallel. That was the proof of it. It was, it was called an indirect proof. Okay, now the only reason why this one works is because of Euclidean geometry. The idea that the belief that parallel lines exist, Euclidean. Okay, I believe your book has a couple side notes that talk about it in this section. You probably should read those. Okay, questions, comments about 3 5. This is not a converse of any others. We've never had one like this before. Okay, I believe um, in the later sections we'll eventually get to a perpendicular postulate, which is basically the same exact idea. But there's there's exactly one perpendicular line. In fact, that's one of the constructions we'll eventually do in this class. I think up to this point, I think we've done like two or three constructions: copy segments, copy angles. I think we've done bisecting an angle um, construction. Questions, comments? Okay, and again, we'll definitely review constructions, things when we use the compass. That's one of our things we do at the, like, the end of every chapter. All right, um, now, this is the one of the new ones we talked about on Thursday. It was uh, theorem 3.5. It was the converse of the alternate exterior. Now, this theorem, the alternate exterior theorem, this is theorem, I think, 3.3 three out of your textbook. It was a couple sections ago. This is in section 3-2. Well, today, this one is the converse of it. So we flip the words around. So if the, uh, the alternate exterior angles are equal, then the lines are parallel. So these are the alternate exteriors. They're on the outsides of the, uh, the two parallel lines. We have the transversal. If these are equal, then the lines have to be parallel. That's what that's saying. Now, obviously, there's more examples of that, but that's, that's the alternate exterior. Okay. And again, this is the, I think this is the perfect converse of 3, 3 again, like I said. Okay. Questions with any of the theorems, postulates we've done up to this point? I do want you to know the names of them. Um, not so much the numbers, I don't really think about numbers. I think about like the name, like alternate x to so if these are equal, then the lines are parallel, or if the lines are parallel, then they have to be the same, you know, vice versa. And again, on the next slide of this is showing what the previous one was, the one we learned like three sections ago. Okay. Those are right. Am I good? 
Okay, all right, flipping. So this is the one, that, you already have this one. Don't write this one down. This one we had a couple sections ago. This is the one that was a converse of. Pair of lines, the ultimate exterior have to be the same. That was the previous one. We had three sections ago. So you can see how like the, the wording is almost the exact same. Okay, all right. New one that we had Thursday was 3-6. This is the one that we had Thursday, brand new one. It's converse of the same side, interior angle theorem. What we talked about Thursday is that it has a different name in the textbook. It was one of those weird ones. It's called consecutive interior. Um, this is a, this is a converse of three. This this previous theorem that we had was 3-2, the same side interior angle theorem, or what the book said, consecutive interior angle theorem. That if these are supplementary, not equal, but supplementary, then the lines have to be parallel. That's what this one says. If they're supplementary, then we have parallel lines. And again, how we know that is because it used um, it used corresponding. Because what we did is we basically set up equations where these are supplementary, so they add up to be 180. These are <coughs> supplementary, they add up to be 180. And the only way that these could both add up to be 180 is if this angle and that angle are the same. And those are corresponding, which forces the lines to be paired. That's what we talked about Thursday. So if you watch that video, you can see that. And again, this is the perfect converse of 3, 2, and I'll show 3, 2 here in a minute. So I'll let some of those people that are writing this down. Okay, for those people that are on Friday, you guys good? Okay, or Thursday. Um, all right, so this is the one that was a flip up. This is the one we had three sections ago. The same side interior angle theorem or consecutive. If the lines are parallel, then these had to be, or these had to be uh, supplementary. That's what we talked about. Okay, all right. I believe this is the one we ended with on Thursday, correct? 3-7? Yeah. I don't know, did we write it all the way down? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So here's what it said. Two lines in a plane are cut with a transversal, so they alternate interior are the same. Then the lines are parallel. So we're talking about alternate interior. So here's your picture. These are alternate interior. If these are equal, then the lines are parallel. And what we talked about on Thursday is that it's called the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem. This is a converse of one we've had previously, but this is the last one we ended with on Friday. Okay, and the reason why this worked, what we talked about on Thursday, I should say, was that this goes vertical to here. So angle six is actually sitting right here because vertical, that was, I think, Theorem two, eight, or something like that. So it comes to here, and then since these angles are, are, are already the same, that means this angle and this angle are the same now because of the vertical idea, and those are corresponding, so of course the lines be parallel. That's what we talked about. And again, this is a converse of, I believe it's theorem 3 1, the very first theorem of the chapter. And I believe on Friday, or geez, Thursday, we, I don't think we compared it to the previous one. I think we just ended here. I think that's where I stopped, and then we had a couple minutes for you to take a break. So I do want to show you that today. I, I do want to show you, like, the previous theorem 3 one, the one we had three sections ago, so you can actually see how the words are a perfect converse, where they just flip the words. This one starts with... Um, the alternate interior being equal, then we prove lines are parallel. Well, what 3, 1 was, if we switch it, you know, if you do the converse of this, then we start with the idea that we have parallel, and we want to show that the angles are equal in the end. So that, that would be 3, 1. I'll show you that here in a minute. I want to at least let some people that are gone write this down. We good? Okay, so here's 3, 1. This is the one we had three sections ago. Lines are parallel, the alternate interior equal. See, do you see how like it switched? The words are like completely flipped. That's why this is a converse. This is the new one. I still just call it alternate interior. There's just two parts. Okay. We good? That was the one we had previously. Okay. New theorem today. This one we did not get Thursday. This is theorem three eight. Here we go. So theorem three, it does have a name. Again, these all these all have names, and you can probably figure out it's a converse of something. So in a plane, two lines are perpendicular to the same line. They have to be parallel. The lines are parallel. I'll let you write down. I'll show you a picture. We'll discuss the line. It's super easy. The proof of this one is way easier than its converse.
here's a picture in case, you know, I know some of you are still writing, but here's the picture of it. So we're starting with two, uh, we're starting with this line being perpendicular to two lines. Two lines perpendicular to the same line. So here's your line that is perpendicular to these two. The goal is to show that these two lines are in fact parallel. Well, here's the here's the easiest way to look at it. What type of angles are these called other than perpendicular? Right. They're right angles. Okay. And what category are they? Are they alternate interior? Are they corresponding? Are they same side interior? Whatever. Mm -hmm. These are corresponding. One's inside, one's outside the two lines. Right now on the same side of the transversal. Well, if the corresponding angles are equal, what we just talked about earlier was that postulate three four said that if the corresponding angles are the same, which they are, if they're both right angles, like we said, they're both 90 degrees, then the lines have to be parallel. It's literally like a two-line proof. Super easy. Again, what where we've seen this theorem before, this is a converse of three four. This is the converse of the perpendicular uh, transversal theorem. So that was a previous term we had, that was 3, 4. That was back a couple sections ago. So it was just a converse. Basically, basically what that one said, if you have certain lines parallel, then they're perpendicular to the same line. Or it was something like, if one of two parallel lines are perpendicular to a transversal, then both are perpendicular to the transversal. Or something like that. But again, this is one that we had previously. And again, why it works is because it corresponds. These are the same numbers. Okay, I do want to show you the uh, the previous one. So I want to show you three four, just so you can see like the wording and how the pictures are the same. So here's three four. If you're playing a line perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other. So here it is, same thing, but you start with parallel. Okay, questions, comments? Okay. All we got is three slides up. There's three examples of like what your homework will look like today. And the homework is very easy. It's, it's basically algebra, um, you know, solving for an X that makes a certain picture work, or it's just knowing your theorems that we talked about in this PowerPoint. And again, the good news is the PowerPoint's online, so you can go kind of click through and see which one's which. Okay? All right. So let's go through an example or two. So we're going to start with uh, kind of the algebra problems. Okay, so. We want to find a certain angle in this picture. The, the angle we're trying to find is the measure of this angle here, Z, Y, N. Z, Y, N, the middle letter is the important one. So Z, Y, N, uh, where is Z at? Z is here, Z, Y, N. So we want to find this angle right here. That is the goal of this problem. We okay, to figure out the measure. We want to find that measure so that it forces the two lines to be parallel to each other. Force P, Q to be parallel to the other line, M, N. And again, we want to show work. So, how can we how can we find this angle in such a way that it forces the lines to be parallel? Well, like when you look at this picture, what should we do? Exactly. If we set the two things that it gives the two algebra things set equal to each other, the reason why these are alternate exteriors. They're alternating sides of the transversal. They're exterior. They're on the outside of the parallel lines. If we set them equal, that will force the angles to be the same, because you're making them equal. So 11x minus the 25 equals the 7x plus 35. If we set them equal, and what we would do is we solve for x. Okay, so to solve for x, we basically just do some basic algebra. We move the 7 over by subtracting it. We move the 25 over, and we'll have to add that to the other side, because it always does the opposite. It moves across the equal sign. So I'm going to get the x's to one side, the numbers to the other. This forces this to be a 4x. This side over here was at 60, and then we can divide. And this turns out to be like 15 or something. 60 divided by 4. Okay, do you see how that works? You always add and subtract things across, then, then what you'll do last is divide. That's basically what you're doing. I mean, that's it. I mean, you can't get any harder than that. Okay, and what we have to do is we have to answer the question yet. The goal is we found x. What do we need? To, what do we need to do with that x now? Plug it back in. Because our goal here was to find this angle. Remember that was the goal. Don't don't forget what your goal is. What is that angle? So we have to take the 15, plug it in. So we plug this in. So 7 times the 15, because that's my x, and then we're going to add 35 to it. So 7 times 15, 
That's 105, and we're going to add 35 to it, which is 140. That's the idea. That's what we just found. Okay, questions, comments about how I just did that? So we, we you know, found X by just simply like looking at the picture and going, okay, we force them equal to each other, it kind of makes sense. Because those are all the here. Now the reason why this works, because of the previous theorems we've done. And it was, uh, the theorem that we had was uh, theorem 3.5. That was the alternate exterior rectangle theorem. And they didn't answer that, but I mean, that's the idea. You have to know your theorems, why it works. Okay, questions, comments about that problem? Okay, I'm gonna give you another one. I wanna see how well you can do on this one. Because obviously I did this one, but you can check the other ones. All right, so here we go. Same exact idea. So let's see how you do here. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time here. Let me read off the instructions. I'll let you try this one out. You can work with me or too many around you. Find x so that the lines are parallel. So the goal is just to find x. You don't have to find any particular angle here. I'm not asking you to find like angle N, P, Q, or anything like that. Give me a couple minutes here. You can try this one out, see what makes it work, see what you did. Remember, not every time you don't not going to always set things equal to each other. That may be supplementary. Um, but hopefully you figure out the way to do this for me, because it is easy. Okay, so hopefully I give you a little bit of time there. Um, what's your initial thought? Anyone have an idea like what we need to do on the next problem? Equal, supplementary, what are we doing on this particular problem? And what type of angles are they? Because obviously we see some algebra stuff there. They're alternate interior. Okay, so that's a big deal. They are alternate interiors. Um, the 5x plus 7, that's this angle right here. I know that's really hard to see, but that's that angle. Uh, the 7x minus 21, that's out. So they're alternate interior. Now, we had a previous theorem. That was theorem 3, 7. What did that one say? Something about alternate uh, interior. Do they have to be supplementary? Do they have to be equal? What is the rule? They have to be equal. So those two angles have to be equal for these lines to be parallel. So the trick is, if I want to make them parallel, set them equal to each other. That was um, that was theorem three seven. If all two interiors are equal, the lines are parallel. So I solve. I basically just move the x's around, move the, the numbers around. So when I subtract the seven x over, subtract the the seven across. So that makes negative twenty eight. This makes negative two, and I can divide and get fourteen. And it's possible because you divide by negative. Okay, makes sense. Now again, if they wanted you to find a certain angle there, plug it in. Maybe they wanted to know what this angle is, right here. Okay, so what I would do is I would take the 14, plug it in, then I could find the angle right next to it, right? So if I plug 14 in here, that's seven times 14 minus the 21. Seven times 14, that is an eight here too, that's 98, and this is practically one. So this angle here is 77 degrees. So then that would force this angle here to be 103. Because these have to add up to be 180. Because they're side by side. That's like little things you can figure out. Okay, questions, comments about what your homework's going to have you do. So you got to just know are they equal or are they supplementary? Do they add up to be 180? That's it. So it's testing your algebra. You only have a select few. It's not very hard. 
Okay, the last type of problem is a little bit different. It's not like these where you're solving your algebra. What you're doing is they're testing your knowledge of your theorems, your postulates. So that would be the last couple. Okay? So let me give you the instructions with the last type of homework we'll ask, we'll ask you. Okay? Okay, so this is like, so there's only two types of problems. It's the ones I just showed you versus this one. Given the following information, I'll give you the information here in a minute. Prove that any of the lines are parallel. So on this picture, certain lines might be parallel. So I'm going to give you information at a time, and then what you do is you take that one piece of information, and from that one piece, are certain lines actually parallel? If they are, you have to state the theorem or postulate that says why. So this is testing your knowledge on your basically your four or five postulates or theorems that we talked about on this section alone. So basically, postulate three five, postulate three six, or sorry, three four three five, and then um, the theorems we talked about theorem three five all the way up to three eight. Okay, so here we go. Here's the first one. Here's my picture. So again, on this, don't don't like look at it and go, oh, these lines look parallel. No, ignore the picture. The picture's drawn wrong. They're going to give you certain information, and then you can tell me is it parallel or not from this information. So here's the first type. So this would be like problem number, let's say, problem number eight in the book. Okay. So this is what they give you on problem number eight. Angle one is equal to three. Okay, so that's, for this picture, so this is like the only information we know. 1 is equal to 3. So if 1 is equal to 3, are lines up on this picture parallel? And if so, which ones? Which lines are parallel if 1 is equal to 3? What do you think? A and B, right? A and B have to be. Um, now, the reason why. So we know that, yes, certain lines are parallel. A is parallel to B, and we know that. Now, the reason is it's because of postulate 3.4. Now, if you don't know that one, that was the corresponding postulate. So it's testing your knowledge on your, on your, you know, your vocab. So it's the corresponding angles. Those are corresponding. Three is outside, one is inside the two lines, and they are equal. They're on the same side of the transversal. Now, I cannot tell you anything about C. It, they weren't even attached to C. They're attached to A and B. That's how I know. Okay, we go to the first one. Okay, so scrub that out of your mind. So now we're going back to a blank slate. So this, this isn't there anymore. So we scrub it. Now we'll go to like problem number nine. Okay? So angle one is 103. Angle four is 100 degrees. So here's 103. Angle four is 100 degrees. Are these lines, are any of these lines up here parallel? Now, obviously, what we're basically checking for is we're basically checking for um, A and C because that's where my angles are attached to, right? They're attached to uh, line A and we're attached to line C. So that's what we're basically checking here. So, are these, so ignoring this, are those lines parallel? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? No. Because the reason why um, it's no, none of the lines are parallel right now because those are both an interior and they're not equal. It's off by about three degrees. You can see that. Okay. In fact, there's different ways to prove, but it's definitely not. It failed, you know, uh, here in three sets. It also interiors. So, so you see, like every time could be different. It could be yes or no, and then you have to state why it is. If so, state it. If not, say just no, move on. So if it's a yes, that's when you have to tell me the theorem. I don't worry about numbers. You can just tell me the name. Open interior, open exterior, corresponding exterior. 